In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at getting to grips with the accelerometer on the micro bit. It's one of my favorite components. It allows us to actually detect physical movement in the real world. So we could take our micro bit when it's done and we could strap it to a box or something like that. And as we twist and turn the box around, the micro bit can detect that happening. So you can make some really cool balance games and things like that once you get to grips with using this. So uh, the way that it works with the uh, micro bit is it's got three different uh, ways you can measure movement. You can measure movement on the x-axis, which in terms of the micro bit, if you imagine it laid flat on a table in front of you with the writing sort of facing you, would be if you were to pick it up between two fingers on either of the two edges and then sort of rock your hand backwards and forwards, that would be the x-axis. You've got the y-axis, so that's now if you imagine holding the micro bit with, one, with your thumb maybe on the bottom of the unit and your finger on the top of the unit, and again you then tip it forwards and back, that's the y-axis. And then finally, that's the z-axis, that's the last one. So that's where if you imagine having it set on a table and then were you to sort of spin it and rotate it while it was flat on the table, that's your z. So we can detect uh, measures, amounts of movement on those three different axes. And the way that the micro bit works is it stores the amount of movement that it detects and it gives you that back as a number. So it gives you back a zero if it's completely flat on any of the particular axes we just talked about. And then the numbers bounce up and down depending on how much it's moved by. And it's very, really sensitive as well, which is really cool. So I reckon uh, you'll be needing to measure at least 25, maybe up to 40 uh, milli Gs. That's the unit of measurement for this. Uh, before you, you know, otherwise it'd be too sensitive for you to be able to use. It really is a very, very sensitive movement sensor. So let's write some really basic code just to grab something from the accelerometer uh, and start seeing what we can do with that. So I've got some code here. This is on the week four lesson notes. It's about just under halfway down the page. So I'm going to grab that and uh, do a copy, control C, and I'm gonna load up mu, which hopefully you've got. There's some stuff from the previous session, and I'm gonna paste that here into mu. So again, keyboard shortcut, control and V to do that. Um, I've got quite a bit of code in here at the moment. Uh, I suppose the simplest program I could do before we even get into all this if statement stuff, just to show you how this works, is I'll just temporarily, I think, I'll just delete all of this. I can always pick it up again. And I'm going to delete all of that and take it right back to this. Uh, let's just look at the code I've got here so far. So I've got the standard line that we always start with. That's bringing in some code from uh, outside the micro bit, some libraries to help us use the accelerometer today. So we must have that. I've then started a while true loop. So we're going to do this over and over and over again. And the only line I've got at the moment is I've set up a variable called x ac, short for x acceleration uh, or accelerometer. And that's just going to read from the accelerometer the amount of movement on X that it detects. Now at the moment, we're not doing anything with that information. The micro bit will know it, but we need to tell it to the user. So I think all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come on here and say display dot scroll uh, X acceleration, like that. Because uh, the scroll command expects some text and X acceleration is actually gonna be a number, I need to make sure to tell the micro bit to treat that as if it were text. So I'm just going to write str, short for string, around that, put an open and a close bracket around it, and that should work pretty good. So let's just flash that to our micro bit and see what that does. So it's pushing up to my micro bit right now. I'll get the message in just a moment. Here it comes. There it is. And what should then happen is as you have your micro bit sat, it should start scrolling numbers over and over again at you as you uh, as you hold it and what you'll see is if you t tilt your micro bit in uh, in one direction then you'll get a reading that should be quite negative if you tilt it to the left and if you tilt it over to the right instead what you should get uh, is quite a positive number instead you'll probably see numbers up to probably in the thousands even if you tilt it up to about 90 degrees i would think probably plus a thousand minus a thousand something like that. So we can see that it's working and we can see that we're taking these numbers, but numeric data is not very helpful. It's nicer to give something visual, which is where my example code from Born to Code comes from. So I'm just gonna go and grab that code again from Born to Code. Let's copy a fresh one. Back in here, delete all of that and paste this one in. Okay, let's look at my uh, my slightly different, my Mark II version of my code. What am I saying this time? Well, I'm still gonna do it over and over and over again. If I didn't put this in a while loop, what would happen is I'd plug in the micro bit, 
I'd get a single reading for wherever it was at that point in time, and then I'd get a blank screen, I'd get nothing ever again. At least this way, by putting it inside this while loop here like this, uh, it shows me the code over and over and over, so that's really useful. So uh, I've got my X acceleration, so I'm picking that up, I'm then clearing the display. What I'm then doing is using our old friend the if statement, so I've got an if block just here, and we're gonna see which of these statements matches our circumstances. So what I've said first of all is that if the X acceleration or the X accelerometer reading is over 25, uh, remember, zero is completely flat, so 25 means I've tipped it over to the right. So if I've tipped it over to the right a little bit, then what I want to do is on the display, I want to turn on a specific pixel. We did this uh, a few lessons ago. Let's just remind ourselves what the numbers mean. So what they mean is that this is which pixel on the x-axis and which point on the y-axis I want to turn on. So I'm saying I want the fourth LED across. So do remember that the leftmost LED, that's LED 0. After that, it's LED 1, LED 2, LED 3, LED 4. So it's going to be in the right column. And then it's going to be, uh, on the y-axis, it's going to be 2 down. So it's not going to be the top row, because the top row is 0, and then 1, then 2. So it's going to basically be the right-hand LED on the middle side. Uh, and then the brightness is 9. Now remember with LED brightness, you can give it a number from 0 to 9. 0 is off, and 9 is all the way on. So let's just quickly look. So uh, LED 4, 2. Let's go back to my photo that I've got. LED 4, 2. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 4. And then for the Y, 0, 1, 2. So it's this LED just here. I'm telling it to turn that one on to full brightness. So that's what happens if I've tipped the micro bit over to the right. Let's look at my next line of code. So if I haven't tipped it right, uh, but instead I get a negative reading, that means it's been tilted over to the left, then what I want to do is to turn on the pixel located at zero across, so in the far left column, two down, just like before, and I want to turn that on to full brightness. So that one would be a zero, so that's in here, uh, and then zero, one, two, so two. So that'd be that LED getting turned on. All right, let's go back to our code. So if it's not that LED and it's not that LED, then what we'll do instead, always, always, because that's an else statement, is I'm going to turn on the pixel located at two, two, and I'm going to turn that one on to full power. So that's the dead center, that's the, the centermost LED. So as soon as I've turned on the appropriate LED, I then jump back to the top of the while loop, take a new reading, turn off all the LEDs, whichever one was turned on before, and I start the process over and over again. So what you'll actually get with this program, if you push this to your micro bit, is effectively something a bit like a digital version of a spirit level that you'd use if you wanted to decide if a shelf at home was flat before you screw it to the wall or something like that. And you'll find it's very, very sensitive indeed. So you've only got to move it a tiny, tiny amount to get it to illuminate the right or the leftmost LED. It's actually quite hard to get it to sit in the center. And it'll tell you if the desk you're set at is flat as well, won't it? Or if when we put the desks in the classrooms, we put those on a bit of a, yeah, a, bit of a slant. So that's really, really neat. Um, what would we do next with that? Well, at the moment then, we've got the ability to look at just left and right. It might be nice to pull in data from the y-axis as well and to include that too. So that's where the batch task starts to come in. Let's take a look at the pseudocode to do that. And as with so many things in coding, oh, wrong week. As with so many things in coding, it's just a question of incrementally or just a little bit at a time improving something. So this code here, we could probably recycle this but just um, as well as taking the x-axis reading, probably put another line under here to pick up the y, and after this if block, put another one underneath it, but probably for y instead, and we could probably get quite a lot of this already. Let's look at some pseudocode. So it looks on the face of it like there's a lot of code here, but a lot of this is recycled from before. We have this idea of x and y this time, we'll see what those are for in just a second, and then we've got a while loop which starts just here. So this happens once. So at the very, very start of our program, we've got this variable called x and y. Again, we'll see what they're for in a moment. And then we start a while loop. We're going to be repeating these instructions repeatedly. Let's have a look. So the first thing I want to do is to pick up the x and the y accelerometer readings. We could probably work out how to get this by looking carefully at the code from this line here. What we then say is we've got an if block. Now this looks familiar, doesn't it? We had something very similar to this 
um, previously. So we're saying if the x accelerometer reading is greater than 25, then x is 4. Okay. Uh, if it's tipped over to the left, then x is 0. And if it's dead center, then x is worth 2. Um, a little bit later on, what you'll see is right at the end, just jumping ahead a little bit here, but right at the end, we've got a command here to turn on the LED located at position X, which we've chosen here, and position Y, which presumably we're going to look at in a second. Anyway, back to our code. So we set a value for X. We then want to get a value for Y, which LED we want to turn on. Uh, and we do exactly the same process again, using 25 to minus 25. And we set the appropriate value. We then clear the display just like before, and then we turn on the LED located at position X, Y. So your badge task, as it says down at the bottom, is to try and write something to, uh, to produce this in MicroPython and push it onto your micro bit and to get it to work. If you can make that work, and if you can make that work, and it's not as hard as you think, again, do feel free to experiment because nothing bad will happen if you make a mistake. You might get error messages, uh, appearing down here, something like that. But even if you do get error messages, the program is pretty good. It usually actually tells you in error messages which line you've got a problem on, and all your lines are numbered down this column here. So the um, the computer really does want to help you to get this right. Okay, so uh, that would be the silver badge, and then for the gold, it might be quite interesting to see if you can get the in-between LEDs. You'll see what I mean when you write the program, I think. You'll probably notice that there's certain LEDs that never come on when you write your program. And maybe you can think about why that is and how we could fix that. And then there's a platinum task if you're feeling even more ambitious still. So go and have a play with the accelerometer and see how you get on.